it's cold and it's messy in here but I've kept working on my projects and I've made some progress with the RS2000 receiver restoration. So what I've done is bought some new seven segment LED displays which I think will fit neatly in this display window. They're green in colour so it's a bit more realistic for the time period. Uh, and then the next thing I've done is take the circuitry from this breadboard which was controlling it all in the original test and solder it as neatly as I can to this prototype solder board and I've made it really flat in the hope that it will fit inside this radio case and then the whole thing can be self-contained and back to being a normal radio with fully working buttons and a proper display. So the next step for me is to cut these umbilical as I call them wires and solder them onto this board I guess and see if the whole thing works, attach the seven segments temporarily just to make sure everything works before I put it all back together finally and get a working radio. So I'll have a go at that now and come back and show you how I get on. I have three sets of wires, I have all the cathodes which are black wire, all the segments which I originally fitted in green and then the two leads from the AC heater element of the VFD, the vacuum filled device, which forms a reference or ground for everything else. So I'm going to do this in stages, I want to wire these onto this circuit board which is going to go approximately here, so what I think I'll do is snip these cable clips and then slide the labels down so I keep them because I really need to know which one is which and then solder them onto this board. As I say I'll do it in stages, I'll do the cathodes first and then the segments and then the heater. So let's just get some snippers. Right so here I go removing cable clips. This is a bit of anticipation or anxiety, I don't want to mess this up. One more. And now I think I can slide these labels. What's this one? This is number two. Here it comes. So there's number two right down to there. I can keep that and let's do the rest. All the labels are now down at the base of the cable as far as you know as far as I need them and so I'm going to cut them perhaps slightly longer than I really need and uh, here we go. So now I have a set of nine cathode leads ready to solder to my board. So I've trimmed all the black leads, I have number nine cathode ready to be soldered so I'm going to do that now and work my way along the row and get all nine cathodes soldered. So here we go, number one. Bit shaky. And there it is, that's the first connection made. Now let's do the rest. Okay, so I've finished connecting the cathodes very neatly. We can see the row of black wires going up from underneath and soldered on and I'm just beginning to do now the segments. Here are the green wires so they're coming up and going into the board between the first resistor and the diode. There we are that's in focus now. So I'm going to get on and solder those A, B, C, D, E, F, G segments and then the dot. So although there's seven segments there are eight wires and actually in my previous video I made a couple of mistakes in the schematic I drew so I'll show that again at some point and leave a link to the document. So now let's press on, finish soldering these, connect the grid and then I'll be ready to try out the seven segments once I've sorted out how to do that. So I've finished uh, soldering all the wires and we can see that the board fits in place. All my labels are a bit springy actually so I'll remove those in due course but the board will fit comfortably under the level of the lid and I should be able to make some sort of plastic bracket, perhaps 3D print something to fit it all in. So now I'm going to take the seven segment LEDs and make some sort of arrangement with them so I can just plug them into this board and test them before I finally do the 
uh, restoration of the receiver. Right, so I've finished the wiring and have my seven segment LEDs all connected to do one final test. Rather bizarrely, they're hanging from a piece of string and connected with flying leads into this board just temporarily, but I had to be absolutely sure the connections were right. I think one or two may be a bit loose, but anyway, you can see that when I turn the dial, the numbers move. If I press the memories, this ninth digit changes. Get all the segments to come on and change one megahertz at a time and see the, hear the beep rather. So when we go to the maximum frequency, 2995.0. So everything's working and it's ready to fit. It's great fun turning the dial and seeing the numbers move. But everything's complete and ready now, so I need to stop doing that. Take it all apart. Once this big circuit board in the top is out, I can easily refit the display and the wiring neatly. I can empty the whole case, clean it up, make the buttons work, look for any defective components and hopefully reassemble the whole thing as a working radio which I can use for my own amateur radio and shortwave listening. So I'll be back soon with part three of this radio restoration series which should bring it to completion and more videos about amateur radio, electronics and other aspects of technology. So thanks for watching.